This is Ronald Coleman inviting you to join Mrs. Coleman and me for the next half hour when our sponsor, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, presents the Halls of Ivy. millions of people are doing all over the country. Ask for Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. Schlitz tastes so good to so many people that it's the largest selling beer in America. It has to be fine to be first. And now, the Halls of Ivy. Alan is a nice name, a good name, but how is it useful? Oh, I'm sorry, Tony. I was thinking in triplication. Oh, well, he was the best half. Uh, you, you were thinking in what? The triplicate, darling. I suppose his name had been Vernon. Old triple V, very something Vernon. It's not useful. No. Well, uh, well uh, anyway, Alan was the best halfback Ivy ever had. Harry would have been good. Uh, uh, Harry? Oh, no, I'm sorry, Toddy. Harry, please, please, go on. Well, Alan was the best halfback Ivy ever had. A fine class president and a brilliant valedictorian. He had the, um, the... the... Harry, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and I dropped the other shoe, Vicky. What would you do with Harry? <laughs> Happy halfback Harry. That's all the ever go on. Well, as I was saying, uh, Harry had... No, no, no. I mean, Alan had the magic touch. Whatever he did, he did a little better than anybody else. And he never strutted. He was good, and he knew it. And that was that. Do I detect a slight case of hero worship? Mm, probably. I was his best friend. And hero worship's not a bad thing when you're young. It simulates the emulation of ideals in character and action. By the time one's old enough to know that uh, honesty is the best, etc., and crime doesn't, you know what, well, it's a little late to start reshaping one's own character. So hero worship, by setting up early standards of behavior, provides a shortcut through experience. Uh, look at Hopalong Cassidy. You look at Hopalong Cassidy. You raise your own posse and I'll meet you at the hiding. Oh. <laughs> well, you see, even you have acquired the language of hero worship. Hopalong is the square shooter incarnate, the champion on the white horse. Yes, the instinct of American children is pretty sound when they select a hero who is quick on the draw for justice. All of us are in... Um, excuse me, darling, are you writing a letter? Oh, no, no, dear, I was just taking notes. You may want to use those cogent little observations again sometime. Oh, oh. Yes, I... now, um, where were we? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, Triple A Richards, yes, the all-American uh... boy. Well, I like your own nickname better, Speedy Hall. Uh, <laughs> well, my dear, I, I was named Speedy for exactly the same reason that a bald-headed man is named Curly. <laughs> <laughs> And the, uh, and the village fat boy is called Shadow. The, the charming perversity of our national humor. Oh, you're just being modest. I do suppose that Alan Richards has changed much. Mm, I wonder. Twenty years can be either kind or cruel to a man like Alan. 
Personally, I think he'll have taken time by the forelock and no nonsense about it. And if we... Well, there's your chance to find out. All right, come on, Vicky. Let's form a reception line to welcome an old friend. Howdy, folks. Why, it's Calhoun <laughs> Gabby. Come in, Calhoun, come in. Well, I just come visiting. Well, I'm sorry. We uh, missed you this morning. Oh, you didn't miss me, Miss Hall. I missed you. My hens had them eggs all laid out to pretty for you, but I had to hide till it to make my morning classes, and all day long I've been busier than a shoke with a cut snail. <laughs> Here you are, ma'am. Two dozen. See you later. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure our dairy situation wasn't that desperate. Tomorrow would have been soon enough. Well, sir, I don't take the postponing. Things pile up on you. First thing you know, you got to do everything at once. And you generally get to it around supper time on doomsday. Oh, well, I've been wanting to ask you, Calhoun. Have you heard from your wife? Now, how's the new baby? Well, Uncle Asian wrote to me, and he said that both Glory and Willie are just doing fine. Well, Willie, I didn't know you named him yet. Oh, didn't I tell you? No. Well, now, that was that was unthoughtless of me. Especially when I should have asked you first. See, it was a toss-up between Ike for Isaac Walton and Henry for Thoreau. And then I got me a new idea. But Glory thought that I ought to ask you for permission. <laughs> Calhoun, a, a college president may assume unlimited authority, but his real jurisdiction is confined to the campus. It's not necessary to get his approval to name babies, or have them for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, now that's a load off my mind. Because we calling him William Todd Hunter Gett. <laughs> Now, don't change your mind now, Doc, because he's been baptized, legal. Uncle Lishan wrote that they already throwed the water on him. Well, uh, Calhoun, this is the most honorable honorary degree I've ever received. I, I'll do my best to live up to it. Oh, you already done your part, Doc. Now it's up to that little video fella. Got something to live up to itself. He's... Excuse me, Calhoun. I'll get it, Vicky. That'll be Alan. Oh, you having company for dinner, Miss Hall? Oh, yes. Well, well, old friend of Dr. Hall. Well, why didn't you say something? I could have just dropped my eggs and lit on now. Once I get to talking to you, I think... Vicky, for... at long last, this is Alan Richards. Victoria Hall. I am delighted. And Alan, this, this is Calhoun Gaddy. Hello. Glad to meet you. Well, howdy. Hey, uh... <laughs> You old Alan Richards' is father? That's right. Do you know my son? Oh, of course I know your boy. We tried out for the same stage play at the campus playhouse. Oh, he is real good. He got the hero part. You know, hero. How did you come out? Well, I'm going to take off a grandpa part. <laughs> you know, it's going to be kind of hard for me to do it. You know how them folks talk. See, he's a way down southern. I don't know whether I can get that accent. Just don't press too hard, Calhoun. I'm sure it'll come naturally. Why, you're right, Miss Hall. It's just like what that man Thoreau says. Don't be thrown off the track by every nutshell and mosquito's wing that falls on the rail. Well, good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. That's a nice guy, Bill. But yeah. uh, isn't he a bit old to be a student here? Oh, he's one of our most promising freshmen. Yes, and with five children. Ah, but that's a story in itself. Alan, it's good to see you. How long has it been? Too many years, Bill. Now, look, both of you, you have a lot to catch up. Why don't you sit down and take a deep breath and ring up the curtain on reunion in Ivy? Uh, I'll just be the lady at the tennis match. Oh, but Mrs. Hall, I want to hear all about you and Bill first. Say, uh, uh, Junior hasn't shown up yet, has he? But wasn't he coming with you? Well, he was, but he had some mysterious appointment this afternoon, so we arranged to meet here. He'll be along in time for dinner. He said it would be a thrill to sit down at table with the president of Ivy. Well, he needn't have waited until his father came to town. We've asked him here a couple of times. Have you forgotten? It takes a freshman a little while to get used to a college president. <laughs> Do you know him, Bill? No, but from all I've heard, he hasn't wasted any time. He signed up for practically all the freshman activities. Yeah, you just had Calhoun. He's already won the lead in the class play. Yes. He seems to have been 
Where did your talent for winning? Ah, oh, but you haven't seen him on a football field. I saw you, Alan. <laughs> if he's half as good and we have a couple more like him, Ivy's got the conference trophy in the bag next fall. Thanks for the memory, Bill. But it won't hold up against Junior. He's got real class. You know, with him here, it's almost as if I were back in Ivy. A kind of return engagement. A sort of duplicate triple A. Uh, no. <laughs> Junior will win his own medals. He doesn't need any help from me. I can't believe it. Me back at Ivy again. Old Corny Thorny still around? Corny Thorny? You know, <laughs> he, he, he was retired ten years ago. Uh, Victoria Corny Thorny was our endearing name for Professor Thorndike. Sociology 1A. And the world's greatest bore. I caught up on all my sleep in his class. Yeah. <laughs> Don't think he wasn't on to us. <laughs> I remember his stopping in the middle of a lecture and saying... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I don't mind having you look at your watches to see what time it is, but it really annoys me when you put them up to your ears to see if they're still running. <laughs> Thanks, just the same. Sorry to bother you. Good night. Oh, that's funny. Nobody's seen Junior at his fraternity house since early this afternoon. I don't know what's happened to his manners. If he got tied up, the least he could have done was call. I'm going to chase him down. Oh, you're not leaving right away. Oh, yes, if you'll forgive me. Victoria, you've done a miraculous job on Bill. He's a changed man. <laughs> twenty years younger than back when I knew him. No, let me see. Twenty minus twenty. Oh, dear. Oh. Doesn't leave much, does it? <laughs> I think Alan, in his whimsical manner, was suggesting that through you, darling, I was reborn. And when I grow up, I hope I'll meet you again. That's a better exit speech than I could think of. Hope we can get together again before I leave. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Good night. Goodbye. Did it occur to anybody else that perhaps young Alan wasn't being rude, but might be in some kind of trouble? It was written all over his father's face. And I don't remember ever seeing him worried before. <laughs> you never saw him as a father before. I know. And somehow I never expected him to play the role so, so zealously. But then, Vicky, his wife died shortly after the boy was born, so it's not too surprising that he's living his whole life over again in young Alan. Mm. He's maternal, paternal, and fraternal all at the same time. Mm. You know, they look amazingly alike. Well, not that that has any... It's pretty late for calls. Dr. Hall speaking. Oh, Dr. Hall, this is the long-distance operator. I have a call for you from Waterford. The line was busy before. Will you take it now? Oh, yes, yes, of course, yes. Just a moment, please. Vicky, whom do we know in Waterford? Well, I don't even know Waterford. Where is it? Well, it's, it's a small town about 50 miles from here on the road to... I have to... Dr. Hall for you now. Will you deposit 30 cents for five minutes? Uh, hello, this is Dr. Hall speaking. Oh, uh, Dr. Hall, I hope I haven't disturbed you. This is Alan Richards. Is my father still there? He just left two or three minutes ago. Oh. You can reach him at his hotel in about ten minutes. Well, no, it's not that important. Now, we missed you at dinner, Alan. Possibly you didn't, but uh, naturally your father wondered what had happened to you. Don't you think you'd better call him? Well, no, I can't. I mean, uh, oh, thanks, Dr. Hall. I'm awfully sorry. Goodbye. What happened to him, Toddy? I don't know. He sounded as though he didn't know either. I think I'll, uh, I'll try his fraternity house again. House, I take it. The yeah, house it is. Graveyard of Ivy's hopes. Defender and scourge of the co-educational system. How would you feel if your sister married a Sigma Chi? <laughs> Incidentally, if you wanted to speak to a particular brother here, none of them are. <laughs> none of them is. Holy cow, for 
professor. <laughs> Whom did he wish to speak to, sir? And whom shall I say is calling? This is Dr. Hall speaking. Of course. And I'm Betty Grable. Kidding, this is Dr. Hall. I'm dead. <laughs> well, without wishing to interfere with your funeral arrangements, <laughs> I'd like to ask you a question about Alan Richards, Jr. Oh, sure. I, I, I'm his roommate, Dr. Hall. You know, something must have happened to Alan this afternoon, and he up and scrammed. Well, did he tell you why? No, that's the catch. He had a date with his dad, but he said, I never want to see him again. What did his father do to him, Dr. I don't know. Uh, well, well, thank you for the information, and good night. Well, what did you find out? Now, Vicky, the boy left his fraternity house this afternoon, saying he never wanted to see his father again. I never heard of such a thing. Mm. And I'm going to try and find out where that boy is in Waterford. Operator. Uh, may I have long distance, please? Just a moment, please. This calls for a little detective work. A little spade work. Sam spade work. <laughs> this is long distance. Go ahead, Sam. <laughs> Mrs. Hall had finally located young Alan Richards in the town's only hotel. Gee, Dr. Hall, I feel terrible dragging you and Mrs. Hall all the way up here in the middle of the night. Oh, we just felt like taking a ride tonight, Alan. And since we happen to be in the neighborhood, we thought we'd drop in. A 50-mile drive? Yeah. Mrs. Hall, I want to apologize for not showing up for dinner tonight. I could have saved you a lot of trouble if I'd explained everything on the telephone. Well, two people together in a room are much more likely to reach a mutual understanding than the same two people in separate telephone booths. Mm. I've always said that it was significant that in a phone booth you don't see the light till after the door's shut. <laughs> Cute observation, my darling. He was it? <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, Alan, I, well, why don't we get to the bottom of this? I suppose Dad's plenty sore, and I can't blame him. Well, I think he's just puzzled. As a matter of fact, he spent most of the evening talking about you. And if you ever need somebody to handle your public relations, he's your man. Well, that's one of the things I couldn't face, Mrs. Hall. I was afraid I'd crack up if I had to listen to Dad on the subject of me again. Well, it's a most important subject for him. He's naturally proud of you. Besides, he's back at Ivy all over again now that you're here. I, I know. That's just it. He's at Ivy, not me. Sure, I registered at college as Alan Richards, Jr., but there's only one Alan Richards. You know that, Dr. Hall. Yes, and he set a high mark for you to reach, I know. But that should be an incentive. An incentive you can't reach is just an obstacle. Dad was great in everything he did. He still is. So he doesn't know what the word failure means. All my life, he's assumed that I was just like him, and therefore I had to be great. I couldn't stand it. He couldn't stand it either if I was a flop. Do you think you've been a flop? Well, I haven't been very good. I'm not my father. And if Dad ever stopped looking at me through his mirror, he'd call me a flop. Oh, isn't it a little early to make such a categorical judgment of yourself? After all, you've just started here. Oh, I can't fool Dad. Well, I just met your father for the first time tonight, but I didn't get the impression that he was breathing down your neck. I mean, he, he talked as though you were a free agent on your own. Well, maybe he thinks so. Oh, he never comes right out and insists that I've got to do anything. It's worse than that. Did he say anything about my not going out for spring football practice? No, as a matter of fact, he has great expectations for you as our star halfback. There you are. Uh, that's what I mean. 
I'm not sure he even heard me. I told him yesterday, and he didn't say anything. He didn't even ask me why. Well, perhaps he was just leaving the decision up to you. And didn't want to say anything that might influence you one way or the other. Well, I'd like it better if he'd say something. Get sore. At least give me an argument. I tell you, he won't hear what he doesn't want to hear. He just freezes. If he'd only fight with me. Why have you tried standing up to him? Yeah, I tried that when I was a kid. He'd just smile, pat me on the back and say, Oh, Junior, you know you can do it. What happens if you know you can't? I have a feeling you haven't told us everything, Alan. Well, there is something else. If Dad ever found out, he'd yank me out of school and make a big production out of it and make it worse than it is. Well, why not let us have the whole story? You'll feel better. Well, it seems that I have a slightly enlarged heart. I can't go out for football, spring football or any other kind. Nothing serious, but no contact sports. What makes you think your father wouldn't understand that? Oh, he'd understand, but in the wrong way. He'd be sorry and sympathetic, but he'd feel defeated. And you know, he can't ever lose. All right, then tell him what you want to. Make him accept it on your own terms. Tell him, good and loud. <laughs> No, thanks, Vicky. There's a point after which stimulation reverses itself and becomes a soporific. But if you push a soporific to the extreme, it begins to develop its own stimulus. You know, that, that's quite a terrifying idea. How do you feel about it? Terrified. <laughs> I mean, I can't decide whether I'm a soporific or a stimulus. Perhaps if I looked it up in the dictionary. If, uh, no, no, I have a better idea. I'll kiss you good morning and you decide. Oh, that'd be lovely. Ah, there's no word in the dictionary for that, darling. No. Maybe I didn't express myself clearly enough. Well, by all means, try it again. <laughs> Perhaps this time we... Right in the middle of my etymological research. Oh, well. <laughs> Morning, Bill. Why, hello, Alan. Am I too early? Am I interrupting anything? Nothing that I can't pick up where I left off. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, good morning. Hello, Victoria. Listen, I just found out why Alan didn't show up last night. Oh, then he did come to see you this morning. No, I still haven't any idea where he is. He must have gone off the deep end when Coach McPherson told him. You see, I called the coach this morning just to say hello, and he told me. Junior's got a bad heart, and I've got to find him. Uh, he's all right. He promised to come to see you this morning. What? You know about this? Why didn't you tell me? The kid needs medical attention. I'll take him to New York with me and get a specialist and we'll do something about it. a specialist he needs. Yes, that's just what he said you'd want to do. But I don't think that's the cure, Alan. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When did you talk to Junior? Last night, after you left. You mean he came to you and not to me? No, we went to him. We found out that he had driven up to Waterford, so we paid him a visit. He must have gone all to pieces when he found out about his heart. It's not his heart he's worried about. It's yours. He's afraid you'll feel sorry for him and that somehow you'll consider him a failure. Oh, well, that's ridiculous. What kind of a monster does he think I am? Oh, he thinks you're wonderful. But that's because you've always been such a success and he's scared to death to make a mistake. It must be my fault, but I don't know where I was wrong. Oh, it isn't really a question of fault, Alan. It's just that you and your son aren't really acquainted. You've been introduced, but you haven't met. What do you mean by that? Well, you've never seen your boy face to face. All your life, you've been looking at him over your shoulder. You've been trying to make him into a future which is a projection of your own past. And he's been trying to follow a path that was already beaten out for him. He's been going your way, Alan. And maybe now he wants to go his own. But I've never opposed him. Well, try it sometime. At least he'll know for once exactly where you stand. He's always done everything he wanted to do. Do you? have any idea of what he wants to do? Why, of course. He's always... Why? It, it's just... Well... No, Bill. As a matter of fact, he's never said. I guess I've done all the talking. Is that it? Only part of it. You could have done even more talking if you'd done some listening. Well, maybe you're right. But where do we go from here? We'll make him tell you the truth. That's a pretty big order, Bill. For you, Alan. Ah, ah. 
Remember those razzle-dazzle plays you used to call when you were running the team? Well, maybe I did. But I always made the most yardage right down the middle. Hey, why didn't I think of that? Will you eat it, Toddy? Yes, of yes. course. I want to make a fresh pot of coffee. I know Alan hasn't had breakfast yet. Morning, Dr. Hall. Hello, Alan. Uh, I missed Dad at his hotel, but they told me he was coming over here. Oh, well, he's here. Come on in. Uh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, before I see him, I thought a lot about what you said last night, and you're probably right, but I don't know that oh, I... So you finally turned up, eh? Uh, hello, Dad. I come a thousand miles to see you. We have a fast ten minutes together. I make a date for us with my best friends, and we spend the entire evening wondering whether you're dead or alive, and you say, hello, Dad, as if nothing's happened. You know, I'm sorry about not showing up last night. I don't know anything. Where were you? What happened that was so important you couldn't even call? Oh, I tried to get you here, but you'd left. Well, you knew I was at the hotel? What's the matter? Didn't you have another nickel? I changed my mind. It w was too late to talk to you. It wasn't too late to drag the halls out in the middle of the night. Now, wait a minute, Dad. I didn't ask anybody to drive all that way to see me. Why did you run away in the first place? I just didn't want to see you, that's all. Well, that's great. That explains everything. At least I'm glad you're honest. But why didn't you tell me that before? Well, it wouldn't have done any good. You wouldn't have heard me. You never hear me. Like yesterday when I tried to tell you I wasn't going out for football. I heard you all right. Well, why didn't you say something? Because you didn't give me a good reason for dropping football. Well, I have plenty of reasons. The first one is I'm no good at it. Who are you trying to kid? I've seen you play. Oh, why do I have to have reasons? I just don't want to go out for football, that's all. Now look, Junior. And when are you going to drop that Junior? Junior means carbon copy, and I don't want to be a carbon copy. I don't want to be page one of the second edition. <laughs> Well, why not say so, then? And why haven't you told me these things before? I've started to lots of times and then found you weren't listening. The cheers of the crowd seem to have deafened you a little. Hey, wait a minute, Junior. Uh, I mean, Alan. I guess we do have some talking to do. I guess I never did hear you before. Well, so you're Alan Richards. I'm glad to meet you, too, Dad. <laughs> Long time no see, eye to eye. How do you like that, Bill? It's taken me 19 years to get introduced to my own son. Well, Alan, sometimes people spend a whole lifetime without knowing anybody. Tonight, you've met your son, and what's more important, you've met yourself. And now, with 19 years of talking to do, I'm sure you two will excuse me. I think I'd better go and see if, if Victoria has fallen into the coffee pot. She often does. <laughs> I was on my way back in with the refreshments, but I thought I'd better wait until time out. Well, I think the game's just about over, Vicky. Yeah, who's winning? Everybody. <laughs> I'm sure it'll end up in a lovely tie that even Countess Myra might envy. <laughs> oh, good. Isn't it strange, Toddy, how sometimes you have to tear people apart to get them back together again? Yes, nature helped in this case. Well, nature plus a shot of adrenaline from Dr. Hall. Mm. Vicky, in my years as an observer of youngsters and their families, I found nothing more heartwarming than a fine father and son relationship. I suppose I've seen all the variations of Oedipus, Electra, and Silver Cord problems. And every father should know what Alan Richards learned tonight, that the father who faces the son will never be confused by his own shadow. <laughs> thought is Schlitz, the beer that made Milwaukee famous. More people like the taste of Schlitz than any other beer. That's why Schlitz is the largest selling beer in America. May we ask you to do whatever you can to help the National Society for Crippled Children. This great service cares for handicapped little ones who really need your help. Buy and use Easter seals, for by so doing, you not only support a great cause, but remind others of a way in which they, too, can contribute. Buy Easter seals and help the crippled children. And here again are Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> Coleman. The other players are Barton Yarborough, Ed Begley, Dave Bullock, Charles Smith, and Gene Vanderpile.
Tonight's script was written by Bob and Milton Merlin and Don Quinn. Music composed and conducted by Henry Russell. The Halls of Ivy was created by Don Quinn, directed by Nat Wolf, and presented by the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ken Carpenter speaking.